So there's one spot on the couch left. The couch is the sweet spot. Okay, so welcome to the Loom Room by Microsoft Research. So here we have a uh, standard video game. So this is an open source game called Red Eclipse. And you can see that you know, we have our traditional game experience. Uh, so we've got a 40 inch television and all of our game content is trapped inside of our 40 inch television. And right next to me we have a projector and a Kinect. So this is just a standard projector. It's a short throw, but you know, off the shelf projector, like 600 bucks, uh, then a Kinect. And what we can do is we can take your 40 inch television and we can make it a 15 foot television. So here we're just taking the game and we're just extending it out into your room. So we're projecting on top of your furniture. So we're not projecting onto a flat white screen, but onto whatever is around your TV. And so that means uh, I've turned off our smarts right now. And you can actually see on kind of the bottom left corner, there's these blue boxes. And you can basically see nothing on them, because right, they're, they're, dark, they're dark blue. So if we turn on our smarts, what we're doing is we're compensating for the color and the geometry of your living room. Uh, so the Kinect takes a 3D scan, and it gets the color, and it gets the shape. And then we use that to drive these uh, visuals. So obviously, uh, you get a more uh, a wider field of view on your game. Let's pick this guy up. And what that means is your game is more immersive. So it's easier to lose your lunch while you play video games. Uh, we can also do more artistic things. So instead of just rendering everything around the TV, we can render just certain elements. So you can imagine a mission objective or uh, you know, like a radar view if there's something next to you. So we can also so selectively render you know, just bullets. Right? We can do that same idea with a sword. Alright, so imagine somebody is firing at you in a game. So now you can tell exactly where that fire is coming from just by using your peripheral vision. So we can display uh, across all of your furniture, or we can be a little smarter. So we can display just on the back wall behind your TV. So we have this nice flat white wall, so we use it. So now virtual reality is just behind the TV, right? But you still get this sense of motion. We can also take your existing living room and imagine you're playing a black and white video game. So you're playing L.A. Noir. Well, now your living room is black and white. Or imagine you're playing Toy Story. Your room is a cartoon. Or maybe Portal. So these are literally shaders that are running in your living room. So anything you do in the game, you take that and you do it on your living room. So let's say we make our world a cartoon. Well, we can uh, change the appearance of your world, but we can also we can distort it entirely. We can also combine these things together. So now the, uh, the back wall is virtual reality, then the furniture is physical reality that's been augmented. And so now you don't know what's virtual, what's physical. Okay, we can also, uh, so all of these effects we've been showing depend on having source code access. So this is an open source game. But we can actually do a bunch of things if we don't have source code access. So we can take ex existing games. Uh, so this is a very simple thing. So it's a moving grid, an infinitely moving grid, but it moves with the camera in the game. So we can actually take either the joystick or we can take the image of a game. We can do optical flow and we can derive the camera motion and then we can use this with an existing game. So we have to hook this, hook this up to like Portal and Borderlands and a bunch of different games. You could play a space game. So now you're flying through space and when I turn, it's actually tracking with the camera motion. All right, and moving to a less violent example. So it's snowing in the game and it's snowing in your living room. So when I speed up, the snowflakes actually speed up. If I turn around, oh, I can drive. Turn 
left, so I turn left, the snowflakes come from the left, turn right, the snowflakes come from the right, and if I go backwards, you can actually see the snowflakes are accumulating on the furniture. So we have a connect, we get a 3D scan of your living room, each one of these things is a particle, it's running a physics simulation, and then if I speed up, they all go away. You also notice that snow is accumulating on the white surfaces. So the white surfaces are uh, they're basically all the surfaces with the normal that point up start to accumulate snow. So you can have this idea of the passage of time for portraying your physical environment. So a more direct example of that idea. Imagine you're playing Call of Duty and you have a grenade. So somebody throws a grenade at you. So now it rolls out of the TV and it bounces on your physical environment. So this depends on the actual geometry of your room. So normally we have a coffee table and it actually rolls under the coffee table. Another example, so here we have a racing game. And this uh, racing game has a bunch of virtual light sources, just like any other game. And we take those virtual light sources and we turn them into physical light sources. So this is a really crude example, but basically anything you do with light in a game, you can now do in your living room. So you could have you know, soft shadows versus hard shadows, different colored light sources, area sources. And finally, uh, we've done, shown a bunch of games, but uh, the other thing you do with your TV is you watch TV. So here we have a 40 inch television, it is a 15 foot television. So this content is actually recorded with a dual camera rig. So we have two cameras, one that records HD content for the TV, and another HD content that records the projection uh, area. You can see that there's a virtual scoreboard above the TV. So you can now take things that are normally on the TV and put them in your environment, freeing up precious pixels on your TV. Also, anything that we do in a game, we can do uh, with film. So you can do edges, we can display it just on the back wall. We can make your world a cartoon. So this is, you know, a rich and flexible design palette for game designers to, to play with. So you can do the obvious thing of just making your TV bigger uh, on top of your furniture. Or we can do more abstract things. No LSD required. So we're basically currently working with uh, game designers and cinematog cinematographers to explore this new kind of language of uh, video game and film. And with that, we uh, conclude the demo. So thanks.